Welcome back to the Sports News Analysis YouTube channel. My name is Mike. I'm continuing my pick-by-pick -pick analysis of the 2013 NFL Draft with picks 58 through 62, uh, the end of the second round here, guys. I'm going to do these five picks, take a little bit of a break, and then come back at you with round three. But, you know, pick 58 belonged to the Denver Broncos. And, you know, one thing that the, the Broncos have lacked here, um, at least last season with Peyton Manning, was a feature running back. Um, they hope Monty Ball from Wisconsin, who they get here with the 58th, 58th pick, is that guy. Uh, Ball has excellent instincts for a running back. He obviously can run very well in between the tackles, as he proved at Wisconsin. He can get outside on the edge better than you think. Um, the only concern with Ball coming into the NFL is the fact that he has a lot of mileage on him. He had a lot of carries at Wisconsin, had a lot of carries in high school. Is he able to withstand and the tread on the tires already and be a quality running back for five, six years in the NFL? Well, the Broncos certainly think so, and they take him here at, towards the end of the first round with pick number 58. Pick number 59 belonged to the New England Patriots. Uh, it was no secret the Patriots needed to at least take one or two receivers in this draft on the outside. They take Aaron Dobson from Marshall. He's a 6'3", 200-pound, big receiver. So Dobson made one of the most incredible catches you'll ever see on a football field. If you haven't seen it, check it out here on YouTube. Um, but other than that, he has good hands. Um, he's physical enough. Um, he's very adept at catching the ball in space. Obviously, with the guy from Marshall, he had to prove some of the senior ball that he could hang with the big boys, and he did that. I think as most young receivers do, it'll take him a year or two to get up to speed in that offense of the New England Patriots. But once he does, if he can develop that rapport with Tom Brady, he may give the Patriots that weapon on the outside that they've been missing here uh, since Randy Moss left. And coincidentally, Dobson from Marshall, just as Randy Moss was. The Atlanta Falcons had picked 60, and they go with Robert Alford, uh, the cornerback from southeastern Louisiana. Six feet, 185. Uh, Mel Kuyper's very high on this guy. Um, if you watch his tape, I didn't never watch them live, but since I didn't get a chance to watch them live this season, I did watch some tape on him. Uh, you know, he, he dominated the level he was at. He's a good cover corner. Um, I think uh, he's better than some of the corners that went before him. I would have took him over David Amerson, for instance, who went earlier um, in round two um, to the Redskins. But Alfred's a guy, he's going to go um, to Atlanta. He may need to play right from day one here in that defense, which is in dire need um, of secondary help. So we'll see if they install him right away. You know, the, the uh, Falcons also went cornerback uh, in the first round as well. Um, so with Desmond Trufant, so you have Alfred and Trufant, you know, the corners of the future now uh, for the Atlanta Falcons. And I think two savvy moves, and I guess you shouldn't be surprised by this point with Thomas Dimitrov making another quality move here for the Falcons. Pick 61 belonged to the Green Bay Packers. And this is one of those picks, rare one in the, in the, at the end of the second round where you sort of knew who they were going to take here. Eddie Lacy is available. It matches the biggest need for the Packers. Best player on the board matches the biggest need. Natural fit, Eddie Lacy uh, to the Packers. Eddie Lacy, of course, his running prowess is well known. What I think he's why I think he's a good fit for the Packers is he's a very underrated pass protector. And he just gave Aaron Rodgers today a hundred ten million dollar contract extension. So you better make sure the running back you bring in is good at pass blocking, and Eddie Lacy certainly is. He's another guy similar to Monty Ball, has the ability to break it on the outside. He didn't have a good pro day um, or combine, a uh, pro day rather, which which is why people were down on him a little bit, and which is why he slipped. But you know, Ted Thompson and that savvy front office, patient, they wait, and they get their guy here towards the end of the second round in Eddie Lacy from Alabama. Pick 62 belonged to the Seahawks. They, too, take a running back in Christian Michael from Texas A&M. Michael's a guy who's been very inconsistent throughout his college career, gotten a little in the doghouse of Kevin Sumlin down there in College Station when he became the coach. Um, there were some people coming into this draft that were very high on Michael. He did have those character and performance concerns, however. He goes to a place in Seattle where he by no means is going to be pressed to play right away. He can sort of ease into his role there in that Daryl Bevel offense maybe learn a thing or two from Marshawn Lynch in the process. So a little bit more of a developmental pick, but that's okay because it's the end of the second round. It's the Seahawks who have a loaded roster anyway. And best case, he's a guy who could come in as a little bit of a scat type of back 
and really be a, an addition and an added weapon for Russell Wilson down the road here um, with Seattle. Let me know what you guys think of these five picks here. Hit me up in the YouTube comments. Hit me up on Twitter, at SNewsAnalysis. Guys, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I upload a pick-by-pick -pick analysis of the draft and upload sports talk videos all day here on YouTube. So be sure to subscribe. Thanks again for listening, and have a great night.